as well. So anyway, what we're going to do this morning is, uh, Dave, can you come up? Dave's going to preach for us this morning. And um, I haven't seen Dave for a very, very long time. In fact, I reckon it would be eight or nine, ten years, something like that, eight or nine, ten years. And uh, when I saw the list of who was coming from YWAM Gold Coast, I did, I, I, it just had, someone wrote me a list of just names and it said Dave. Now, how many of you think Dave's a common name? It's just a common name. So I didn't think that this Dave, I thought it could be any Dave on planet Earth. And then uh, when they rocked up and he walked in, I was so uh, excited to see him. He's a great guy. I've had a bit to do with Dave over the years. Very passionate for God and a great communicator. So I'm looking forward to what God's laid on your heart for us this morning, Dave. Bless you, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you, Al. Well, good morning, Arise. You guys doing well? Good stuff. Well, it's nice to be here. It's been a great week, and uh, it ha- like, it's just been, it was very exciting for me to see Al again. I, um, I actually didn't know that this was um, the Kirchens were pastoring this church, because um, one of our guys was just organizing the outreach for the week, and we unanimously felt like we needed to come to Lismore. And, um, and then it was uh, over our staff retreat last week, someone pulled up the Arise YouTube channel and I heard someone preaching and I'm like that's Alan Kirch and I know I know that voice and um, lo and behold here we are it's just so good and it's been actually great just to hear a little bit of the storyline as well too you know Alan Jackie and um, and just how this all came about and the history of this it's just it's very exciting to see what God is actually doing and um, and actually connecting with some of the other pastors in Lismore as well. Um, it's just exciting to know, like, what is God saying to us, right? Like, is he, is he saying something? You know, uh, what's, what's he doing in our midst? Are we, are we hearing what he's saying? Is there something that he's saying where there's a thread that we can really jump on and pray and believe and trust God for breakthrough, right? And I think seasonally God brings words and um, and sometimes, you know, like there's like, like a long season where two, three years where God is bringing breakthrough words that we really need to hear and jump on. And I mentioned this last night as well, too, when we agree on these things and we declare, we prophesy and we trust God for them, he brings breakthrough. He brings breakthrough. His desire is, is that Lismore would be saved. Would that be a fair statement? It's really exciting. So um, I got a couple things I want to share with you guys. Hopefully I'll get it out. And it'll make sense to you guys. If not, just talk to Al afterwards. <laughs> we'll see if it makes sense to you. Um, we were praying for a rise um, on Monday when we arrived. And we we're just like, God, what, like, what is something that you are actually doing? We are new to this space. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in Lismore. Um, and in fact, when I, when I was here, it was basically a, a drive through to Newcastle. <laughs> so I didn't really spend any time here. But I'm always interested, you know, going to new places. What is God saying? Is there something that he's highlighting? And, um, and one of the words that um, got highlighted to us in our moment of like prayer and worship was exposed, right? And um, we began to ask a few more questions about what, what do you mean by exposed God? Like, what, are you, what are you trying to say through this? And there's a few of the words that came forth with, with light and, uh, and how light exposes darkness. And and how God really wants to expose things in our lives, right? He wants to expose things in our life, not to call you out and make you look foolish or anything. He wants to expose things in our lives so that he can bring healing and deliverance and wholeness. So there's, there's a perspective that we have in, in the kingdom where we see that God's word brings healing and deliverance and wholeness, right? But if we don't have the right perspective when we hear exposed in the kingdom, it can really just reveal all the things that we shouldn't be doing, all the things that we are doing, desire to do, that God doesn't like. And maybe some of that is true, but in God's perspective, it's always about bringing wholeness. It's always about bringing, bringing every one of us into fruitfulness, fullness, living whole for Jesus, right? So I want to start out with a um, scripture. If you guys got your Bibles, you guys can turn there. It's in uh, Hebrews 4. We're going to start at verse 12. Um, and I, I, I just think this is so good because um, God's word is really powerful. And sometimes we believe that and sometimes we don't, right? And uh, one of my prayers really is, is that God, would I, 
would I never just become so familiar with your word that I forget that it's living and it's active that I forget that it's actually life to me today it's 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 what's create Jesus is the word we are made by the word in the image of the word right so there's something really powerful that we get to understand so Hebrews 4 verse 12 and it says this for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and then verse 13 and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account so here we see this incredible passage in Hebrews 4 where it's talking about the Word of God as God speaks there is power power is actually released we see in Genesis 1 he creates the world with words right and we've got this thing I'm, I'm holding up my cell phone because I got the Bible and many translations in here but we've got the Word of God for every one of us right that we get to read every day we get to dive into and really ask Holy Spirit to give us understanding of and it begins to create new realms for you in your every day every day we get to walk with God talk with God we're filled with the Spirit of God he's with us in every moment of the day and his word brings life it's sharp and it's active let's just see that for a sec the Word of God is living and powerful it's actually living and it's powerful when we come into our mornings or our days and our weeks and there's this thing called communion with the Holy Spirit and the Apostle Paul leaves leaves this with many of his letters he says and have communion with the Holy Spirit the person of God that is on the earth with us right now is the Holy Spirit and he's been poured out upon all flesh and so if we are born again we have the Spirit of God living and dwelling within us and there's this powerful space where we get to commune with him every day every day every moment we get to commune with God and what that simply means is just acknowledging talking having conversation with the Holy Spirit and it could sound a little bit weird if you're walking through a park and people don't know that you're talking to God but you're talking but I've just discovered that I'd rather be weird like that than have no communion with Holy Spirit it gets a little bit weird for maybe the neighbors that don't know God but for you it's the power of God it's actually bringing what we do every Sunday into an everyday fellowship with God knowing that God is real and his existence is with me and this is what I've discovered guys is that there's many people that don't have a great awareness of God they know that there's an existence of God and they know that God is real and we know that going to church is wonderful we know that reading the word is a good thing but yet we don't have communion with Holy Spirit every day and so it's, it's this weird thing where it's like I've I've heard it said like this once and maybe this will drop for you how, how strange would it be right if you were to jump into your car and you pick up your best friend you pick up your best friend your best friend jumps in the car and you've got a one-hour drive to Brisbane or wherever you're going and you don't say a word to that person you don't even say hello you don't even acknowledge that they got in the car you just they just get in and you just drive and then they get out and you get out and you just go with your day that's how strange it is friends that's how strange it should be in the kingdom of God when we wake up in the morning and we don't even understand that God is with us and I don't say this condemn I I say this to encourage you that we can actually talk and walk with God every day but often what it is it's the acknowledgement that God is with me it's the acknowledgement that I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit right now today does that make sense so talk with God walk with God talk to Holy Spirit and you might be the oddball in your friend group you know like you might be the person walking through your park that looks a little bit strange but um, tell you what when you hear from God in those moments it's really powerful then later on in your day when God asks you to pray for somebody and the power of God's released and they get healed all of a sudden it's an amazing act of God that you're talking with him Does that make sense guys 
I am so about the journey, right? It's, it's one thing to get born again and have these powerful encounters. And I had my moment January 7, 2001. I remember it so clearly being delivered of drugs and alcohol, my life filled with sin. I remember it clearly, but what I've discovered is life continues. Those grand experiences, they come and they go. God is the consistent one in our life. And so all we need to do is just walk with God. The things that are challenging in our life, we have to surrender those things to God. And we need to allow His Word to expose the things in our life that are cancers. And this is where the word exposed becomes really powerful because His Word does this. When we get closer to light, it reveals more. And the Word says that He didn't come to condemn the world. So He's not here to condemn us. But if we look at it like this, folks, if, if sin is like a cancer in our lives, and you know that you've got cancer in your life, how quickly would you want to get to the doctors or the hospitals to get that thing cut out of your life? Why? To be made well. To be made whole. Does that make sense? It's like, so it's not like God saying, you dirty, rotten sinner, you're a scoundrel, I hate you, I can't believe you did that thing, I can't believe you're doing that thing. No, he's saying, hey, child of God, come. I want to heal you, I want to deliver you, I want to mature you into the things of God. And so sin is like a cancer in our lives. And it goes rampant, and it multiplies, but the Word of God wants to expose those things. And so when we're feeling a little bit stirred on the inside, when we hear things like this, or when we're in worship and someone sings a word, or maybe there's a phrase that kind of stirs you and we feel a little uncomfortable, that is such an amazing place to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you doing right now? What are you doing? Is this a moment where I need to just cry and let it all out? And not just be a strong man? but actually become a weak man and let him be strong and deliver you from the thing that is killing you. It's awesome, guys. It's an encouraging message. It's encouraging to know that God cares enough to make you whole. Letting the Word of God shape us. Letting it actually do something. It's so easy to come into a Sunday morning, right, and hear a great word and be in, inspired and encouraged in your spirit. And all of that is good. But, man, I want to encourage you to pick up your swords. This is the word of God on my phone. Your Bibles. Pick that thing up and start reading that thing. If you get one chapter, a few verses, meditate. Connect with God connection with the Holy Spirit is so important because we're not called to become religious people. We're called to become people that know God and make Him known. The power of God living in you. And we hear about it. But my discovery is, is that many of us haven't really walked in it. But we can. We can. It's not just for a Sunday morning. But we have to open our hearts we really do. Like, Holy Spirit wants access to everything, right? But it's invitational. The kingdom is invitational. Just because we show up on Sunday doesn't mean that we're inviting Him into everything. I've discovered that in my own life so many times where I'm feeling that little thing on the inside. I'm like, what is this? Why am I feeling uncomfortable? Why, am, why is there something stirring in my spirit right now? God is knocking at the door of our hearts, friends, he's knocking, he's knocking, he's knocking. It's because he wants in. He wants in. Why? So that you could be made whole. So that you could be made whole. Let the Word of God shape you. When we find ourselves wrestling with the Word of God and our life isn't measuring up to the Word, man, don't, don't get down on yourself. Get down on your knees, start praying. Start trusting God for breakthrough. It's not mind over matter. The power of God is here to change your mind. Repentance is a beautiful thing in the kingdom. It's simply just saying, God, forgive me for the things that I've done. Forgive me for the way that I've been thinking and walking. I actually want to change. I actually want to change. And so I'm actually forsaking 
the way that I'm thinking. And I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust that you are going to give me the power and the ability to walk in the opposite direction. I am going the opposite way. But these are conversation pieces, friends. Conversational pieces with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He loves you. He's your best friend. He desires you. He cares for you. Does that make sense? It's really simple, but oh my gosh, how easy is it to miss it, right? It's all about relationship. It's all about knowing God. Not just in your head, but in your everyday, knowing that the Holy Spirit of God is actually living in me. He's the one that gives me revelation of the Word. It's not my job to grow you. That's His job. I can plant a seed. I can water. But it's His job to grow. And in the same way, as we respond to God in these things, it's His job, but you need to open your heart. You say, God, I'm feeling real uncomfortable right now. Oh, don't feel bad about yourself. Feel good about the fact that God is wanting to change something. Guys, come on. There's something greater. There's something greater. God is wanting to do something in Lismore. It was wonderful last night hearing some of the words. But we got to stay connected. We got to stay connected. We can't just come to church and think that God's going to do everything else. He's actually empowered His body. That's us. He's empowered us with His word and His spirit to go and bring the kingdom of God. So we just bring it. We just bring it. We pray for the sick. Why? Because they're going to recover. Just what the word says, right? We become exhortation to those people that need encouragement. Going to your neighbors, going to your friends, being a source of encouragement for them. What a radical thought, hey? It's actually really simple, and I'm sure Al has probably preached this message a billion times. But I'm telling you, it's... I. I'm actually believing this more and more. We don't actually need a new message. We just need the message that's already been given. And we just need to actually open our hearts to it and say, God, how do I engage with that truth? How do I engage with that? Where's the place of application so that I'm not just walking into every Sunday and walking out going, wow, that was really inspiring, but I have no idea how that applies to my life. Hopefully, relationship with Jesus is something that you can apply and quite simply just talk to him. Just begin to talk to him. Be that weirdo walking through the park that's talking to Jesus. You know, I've had these, I've had many incredible moments, but there's this park and I don't know if people are watching or not. I honestly don't really care anymore, but it's, it's my four minute walk to work and I'm, I'm, I'm in that park and I'm just talking to God and half the time my, my eyes are closed. I'm there's, there's no poles or anything, and so I'm happy that I'm not walking into things, but it's, it's just my space, guys. It's my space where I'm just like, thank you, Jesus, where I just get to ask him to forgive me if there's unconfessed sin in my life, where I just get to say, God, I just thank you that you're with me, and Lord, would you help me to be loved today? Would you give me wisdom and, and how to walk in today, how to lead, how to be a friend, how to be a leader? God, thank you for that. And man, it's, it's the most incredible space for me. Find your space. If it's not the park, make it the car. That's where people seem to just get wild and crazy, you know. Find your space. But that's the moment where God speaks to me, these really simple things. And I remember coming out of a time, you know, with a a bunch of students, because we run DTS programs in YWAM. And um, and I remember there there was this place where they asked me to have a chat with some of the students. And one of the students asked this incredibly, like, just good question. And... As he asked it, I was thinking, man, this is, this is a really good question. They were all discussing, and then they leaned over. They said, Dave, what are your thoughts? And I legitimately had no idea how to answer the question. And as I opened my mouth, the Holy Spirit filled my mouth with words. And you know it's not you when what's coming to your mouth and your head's going, wow, I have no idea what I'm saying right now, but this is really good. You wish you could just record that thing, you know? Um, it, And it was this moment where these guys looked over and they're like, that was incredible. And I just had to stand up and say, guys, I'm 
I just need to declare right now that was Jesus. I had no idea. I wish I could have recorded that because he spoke and it wasn't me. And we get these incredible moments with God as we, as we surrender, as we acknowledge him. It's not hard work, friends. He wants to use you. It's not how many verses you read that day. That's depending on how well or how powerful he's going to use you. He's just looking for willing and available people, right? But I walked out of that space and I'm in my park again. And I was like, whoa, Jesus, that was so good. And I'm just walking through the park and I'm like, God, you make me look good. You know what he said to me? You make me look good. I was a blubbering mess the whole way home. I walked into our house and I was just weeping and crying. And my wife, Sheree, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, man, it's good, Jesus, Jesus, right? We have these moments with God because one word from God can set you free. One word from God can shape your day. Letting it shape you, letting it change you. Invitation. Invitation. God wants in, but he says this. Knock. Ask. Receive. There's a place of invitation for every one of us. If we allow God to come, and it gets a little uncomfortable sometimes, gets a little bit hard sometimes because every one of us has a story. I've discovered that, right? We all have stories. We all have stories. We're all at different places in life. We have challenges in life. But the thing that I'm seeing is the consistent is that Holy Spirit wants to minister to every one of those things. And so we just need to invite Him. We need to invite Him. We need to let the Word begin to change us. And never get offended by the word. You know, I've, I've, um, I've experienced that myself. Maybe Al gets up here, someone's up here preaching a word. And, and maybe in our heads we're just thinking, yeah, Al's preached not me because, uh, because I told him earlier that day that I was struggling with that. And now he's, yeah, now he's just calling me out in his sermon, you know. He's calling me out on this. And they're calling me out in that. And they're call Friends, what an opportunity to actually ask the Holy Spirit to come and heal a place of repentance, a place where we can get free from those things, right? Never get offended by the Word of God. I've had a few people over the years say to me, don't just give me a Christian answer. Don't give me Scripture. And look, I, I get it. We can actually be heavy-handed with Scripture, but never get offended with the Word of God. Remember, it's the thing that makes you whole. It's the thing that shapes you. It's the thing that sets you free. Be encouraged by the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Let it build something in your midst. Let it become flesh. Make sense? You guys okay? All right, man. <laughs> Just making sure. I had this, um, this thought, you know, um, this week as well, too, as I was praying for this morning. And it, this is what I heard in my heart, hand in hand with light hand in hand with light and visuals are really powerful for me and maybe they are for you as well but this is just it hand in hand with light like we are walking with light we're walking with light light is a really good thing man light is a really good thing it exposes but it allows you to see where you're going and we need that as believers, man. So we don't just get complacent with the things that are happening every day or get so discouraged that the Word of God has got no place, where prayer's got no place, communion with the Holy Spirit doesn't have place because we're overwhelmed by the cares of the world. Have communion in that place. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Matthew 5, 6 says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hebrews eleven six, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. This is a place where we get to spur one another on, right? After this service, you can just go and you can lay hands on somebody and just pray for them and encourage them. 
Like this is a place, right? Where I think it's in Hebrews uh, 12 where it actually says, don't forsake the gathering of the saints, but stir one another up in love and good works. And so this is a place where family comes together and we pray and we stir one another up. We go, how's your week been? Oh, it's been a little bit crap, man. It's been a little bit difficult. It's been hard. Man, let me just pray for you. I'm going to stir you up. I'm going to let fire on you. This week would be an incredible week. You would overcome. You'd know God is with you. How's your week been? It's been great. I'm going to give you more. We stir one another up. We pray for each other. We inspire one another. We're calling up into something greater. The week's been hard, but Jesus is greater. That's not a cliche statement, friends. It's actually just truth, right? But as we rise to it, it's amazing how your day and your week just gets better because your awareness of God is there. The prayers of the saints lifting one another up is just a really great space for you to have an awesome week and just know that God is with you. That makes sense? I just want to just talk about this just just for a moment not as a heavy thing but as a if I can say it as a joyful thing right because um, as as I was praying for this you know the whole e exposing thing right um, I really do believe that God wants to do that in our hearts you know and there's a place of joyful repentance of really um, allowing God to break in to actually break in, to really just break in. Like God is, he is just, he's just waiting. He's like, when you open, I'm gonna come. Like this is the great thing about God is if you, if you give him an inch, you'll take a mile, right? He'll just come, he'll just come. Just don't resist. Where there's a resistance of the Holy Spirit, you're actually stopping life from coming. You're stopping from maturity coming. And this is the thing is that, you know, God in his desire for us is not just to stay where we're at, but it's from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. There's a place where Paul encourages the, in, um, well, we think it's Paul, in, in the book of Hebrews where it actually talks about, hey man, there's, there's a place where you should be maturing in your walk with God, but you're still on spiritual milk. You're still in a space where you're struggling with the same things 40 years later, 20 years later. And there's a desire in, in the heart of God for us to be fathered well. And guys, this would be a strange thing. And I mentioned to someone yesterday this story as well. I've got an 11-year-old. Her name's Eliana. And as a good father, what I'm trying to do is teach her and train her in the ways of the Lord. But I'm also trying to teach her how to have showers every day. It's amazing how kids just don't have showers every day, right? To brush your teeth in morning and at night. How to take care of yourself, to prepare for school, grab your bag, be on time, all these types of things. I, I actually want to teach my, my daughter this, right? But if she was 25 years old and you guys were a fly on the wall in my house, and 25 years old and my daughter walks in and says, Dad, I don't know how to get dressed. Dad, can you, brush your, can you brush my teeth for me? Dad, what do, what do I do with life today? How do I go to school? How do I catch the bus, Dad? I would dare say that many of you guys, and maybe rightfully so, would think there might be a few parenting problems. Maybe there's some issues. Unless my daughter had severe illness of some kind, I would probably think there is something wrong about that picture. Would that be a fair statement? I would probably think so as well. And so I'm trying my hardest to get my daughter to brush her teeth. <laughs> it's great. But see, this is the thing, friends, is that we grow up into God. He is a good father, and his desire is that he wouldn't have to tell you every little thing about every day. But that as we turn 25, we'd know how to get dressed. We'd know how to brush our teeth. We would know how to clean ourselves. We would know how to open our Bibles. We would know how to pray. We would know how to seek the Lord. We'd know how to get breakthrough. 
Does that make sense? Because he's a good father. He's a good father, and his desire is to grow us up into maturity. So that when we walk outside those doors, we go, what a cracking message. Man, I feel like God spoke to me about something. I'm going to pray about that thing. I'm going to repent because I've been a bit naughty this week. And I'm going to ask Holy Spirit to come and empower me to, to just live victorious this week. The fathering of the Lord is upon us. But we need to understand the process, right? And so let this picture be image for you in where you're at with the Lord. Let it encourage you. If you're the 25-year-old that doesn't know how to brush your teeth yet, man, don't get down on yourself. Ask the Lord to teach you how to stay in communion with Him. I need to get around people so that I know how to pray. So I can begin to pray. Open my word. Come to things. Fellowship with one another. Talk about Jesus. All these wonderful things that just encourage growth. He's a really, really good father. He's a really good father, and he cares about the journey. He cares about the stuff that you're going through. He cares about the hardships. He cares about the joys. He cares about everything, whether it's finances, whether it's marital things, whatever, whatever is going on in our lives. Rest assured that God cares about those things. But it's perspective. The kingdom has a different perspective. As Al mentioned earlier, we've been translated out of darkness and into light. And so in this place of light, he's wanting to give you the eyes of God. And sometimes in our own wisdom, we try to work things out without God because we're a little impatient with the process. We're a little impatient with how long I've prayed. It's been a solid 10 minutes and nothing has happened yet. I've been praying for at least a week and I still haven't got that million dollar check. You know, I've, I've, I've prayed for this and I've prayed for that. We have so many reasons in our own minds as to why this thing doesn't work, but yet we show up on a Sunday morning. It's because we know something is real, but we're unsure how to bring application to the truth of that. Communion. Communion with God. Walking with Him in the cool of the day. Hand in hand with Holy Spirit. Walking with light. It's so much better that God teaches us how to do these things as opposed to just giving us a miracle. I used to love miracles. I still love miracles. They're amazing. They're incredible. Every single time, they're amazing. But I'm really enjoying the fathering of the Lord. I'm enjoying it. Because now it's not just about the stuff that He does or the wonders that He does in front of me. But it's actually about walking with Him and being okay. Like actually being okay with my day I promise you most days I'm actually okay but it's a pressing into the Lord you press in I can't do it for you but can you learn how to do that press in in those moments where it can be really weird at work and you're just feeling really unsettled man just pray God thank you thank you that you're with me Man, this is so hard. Just give me strength, Lord. Let me just be so aware of your presence right now. Let me be aware that your Holy Spirit is going to give me wisdom for this. And let that settle in your moments. Let it settle. It makes it all real. Because He's real. That's the access point. That's the invitation. He's always there. But is He invited into your space? Is He invited are we making room for the Spirit of God or have we gotten so good at this church thing that we can just do it without Him? I mean, what a sad day that is when we come to that, hey? But the great thing is, is that joyful repentance is there again. We get to pray. We get to thank the Lord for all the good stuff that He's doing. But we get to repent of all the rubbish that is keeping us from true life. Does that make sense, guys? You guys okay with that? <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> but I really want to exhort you guys in that. Don't get offended with the word. Let it shape you. 
read it. Let it inspire you. Let it shake you up a little bit. Let's step into greatness the way that he's created us. I think it's so good. Why don't we just take a moment right now, hey? Um, I'm just going to pray, but let's, let's, let's give God a moment where if, if there's a place that maybe we just need to repent. And remember, it's not a swear word. Repentance is not a swear word. He's not saying you're a bad person. He's just not saying you, you're, you're ugly. and He's not saying any of those things. He's saying, hey, do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? Let's just take a moment. Let's just wait on Holy Spirit and see if he puts anything in your mind and heart. And if he does, just to yourself, just talk to, talk to Holy Spirit. God, we just want to thank you right now just for the gift of relationship and we thank you for the gift of life that comes through knowing you and right now Holy Spirit we just want to give you this moment if there's things that have really become walls and barriers in our lives where we have shut you out Lord would you just speak to us about those things right now so that we can get it right and be free thank you Holy Spirit Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. In glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, we invite you to come and to minister to our hearts. Father, we're just so grateful. We are so, so grateful just for the reality of Jesus in our everyday. And I pray that this week, Lord, we would we would acknowledge, we would know there'd be a place of reality in our own circumstances in life, God. And yeah, we just pray that power would be released. Power would be released, Lord. Power would be released in this week, Lord Jesus. That our conviction levels would be higher than ever before, Lord. We'd be so sensitive to the things of God so aware of what you're wanting to do in our workplaces, homes, marriages, friendships. God, we just thank you for your lordship in all of these things, God. And you know, we just really want to honor you. We really want to honor you with all that is within us, God. We actually honor you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, just as we finish, I just want to encourage you guys, if there is a place where you're like, man, I, I think I would really like a little bit of prayer and stuff. Al and the team, they're here, man. Let's, the miracles generally within the house. We just pray for one another, ask God to come, and he just comes. That's, that's just what we do. But if you guys would like prayer and stuff, please come. 
Like if you're feeling something on the inside, just come and get prayer. Don't, don't walk out the doors when there's an unction of the Holy Spirit saying, just come and get it. It's a place where we just drink. Why? Because we'll never thirst again. Be continually filled. And so I want to encourage that if you're being stirred this morning and you're like, man, I, I really want prayer for more of that, then just come. Teams, here will pray for you, will encourage you, will exhort you in the things of God. You walk out of this place changed, empowered, and just knowing that you're not alone. We're actually in this thing together. We're in the race together. The family of God, right? Does that make sense? Right on. Well, Jesus, we thank you. And uh, I, I just pray such a blessing on Arise, God. I thank you for Alan and Jackie and for the leadership in this house, God. And I just pray that it would be exponential, Lord, that um, there would just be miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. There'd be maturity in this house. This, this house would be a place that people would look at and go, whoa, look what they're doing. Not just Alan and Jackie, but look what the body is doing in this place. Thank you, God. We thank you for your goodness and for the transformation of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, man. Thank you. Uh, before we walk out of here, Daniel, do you want to get your, your, your guys back up? We're finished. If you've got a cruise and you've got to go and do stuff, that's all sweet. We've got tea and coffee. Uh, next door, um, so go and grab a tea and coffee. But every now and then, there's a, a, a word that comes out, and there's a definite uh, invitation, a definite place for you to do something with that. So what I want to do is, is if we want to, if you want to go next door, have a tea, coffee, whatever, that's fine. I want these guys just to play. And uh, if you're in this place today, I, I don't know. Sort of, there's some new faces here today. Um, firstly, I don't know what your relationship with God is like or where it's at. What I do know is God's relationship to you is that he loves you. I don't know how you feel about him, but I do want to ask you to consider the claims of Jesus if you don't know him and you haven't thought about them. Maybe today you felt something in your own heart and you just know, you can't explain it, but you know that there's something real about what Dave was talking about. Can I encourage you just to open up your own heart to God this morning? Maybe you came here with somebody. Why don't you ask that person, hey, there was something going on. I don't know what it was. Maybe you can explain it to me. Maybe you can help me make sense of that. The other thing is that maybe uh, God has been stirring you today. And I believe He has been. I know that within my own heart, God's been saying some things to me. You know, one of the things that as a, a, a body, I think in general, we're not really good at, and that is this thing called accountability. And that's just simply where we go to somebody and say, you know what, I just want to say to you, this is what I felt like God spoke to me this morning. I want to get it out because it's one thing to keep it in here and just do business with me and God. But I think we're meant to do business with me, you and God. And that's where the most powerful stuff takes place in my life is when I go, you know what, Jackie, I feel like God said this to me and I bring it out in the open. And when I keep it in myself, what tends to happen is give it a day, two days, three days, five days, that seed has died and the word's gone. But when I quickly jump on that and go to someone and say, hey, I feel like God said this, whether I just want to let you know, can you be praying for me? Or maybe it's, hey, I just repented of this. I'm wondering, can you pray for me? I just want to let you know that, hey, this is going on in my life. And we bring that stuff and we expose it to one another. There's something really powerful about that as well. I don't know if it's just me, but the greatest growth in my world has not come when it's just me and God. It's come when it was me, God, and somebody else involved in that process. So if you feel like God's been speaking to you about stuff, why don't you uh, uh, grab somebody here? We'd love to pray for you up here, but you know what? Maybe you're more comfortable being prayed for by the person next to you or somebody that came with you. Why don't you uh, pray for one another? Turn to the person next to you. Say, look, no pressure, but can I pray for you? Has God been saying something to you? Uh, this morning. So let's do a little bit of application, a little bit of business with God there too. Uh, again, as I said, our, our service is finished. Grab a tea and coffee. Best coffee you're going to have in the next 20 minutes is going to be out in that room, I guarantee it. Uh, best tea you're going to have all morning is going to be out there after 12. You'll find better tea somewhere else. You won't before that, trust me. Um, other than that, guys, enjoy your week, uh, but just respect this space for people that might want to sit here and spend a little bit of time with the Lord. Bless you guys.